this is my studio. I think it's pretty cool. I really like it. It's got like the pegboard kind of thing going on. And as you can see, I have a lot of bags, but I've never done a what's in my bag video. But seeing how this channel is all about this sort of thing, and this is only my second video, so I thought this would be a great jump point to share with you what are the gear, uh, what is the gear that I use most often, like on a day-to-day -day basis. Plus, I just got back from shooting a big event, and next weekend I'll be shooting a big event, so I thought you might be interested in seeing what gear I'm using to shoot those events. As you can see from this bag here, bags on the walls, I even have some bags on the floor. I have a lot of bags. And through the years, I've kind of gone from bag to bag as my needs, my wants, even my understanding of how I shoot and what I need out of the bag has evolved. I have three main camera bags. The Prima Boundary Supply makes it. It's an incredible bag, it's super durable, and it's what I take if I wanna shoot in the rugged outdoors. Now, my latest pickup has been this one. This is the, the first version of the 30 liter uh, Peak Design Everyday Bag. And I've come to learn that I hate taking a bag on and off. Sometimes you're in an environment where you can't do that anyway, or if the environment is so dirty, that putting the bag on the ground means a greater likelihood of that environment getting into your bag. That's what's great about this bag is because it can just stay on your body because you have full access to the entire bag from the side. So you can just over the shoulder, zip it. This is the big bag. This is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic Backpack. It is an excellent bag. It does have some pros and cons. It's got more organization than you probably want. It is massive. It holds so much gear, which could be a con too. There's really only one con for me and that is the zippers. I'm not a fan of watertight zippers because they don't seem to function very well. It seems like Peak Design is the only company so far that has mastered a watertight zipper. Well, Boundary Supply on some of their bags are good. But sitting this thing down, like it's a chore. You have to have these super long zip, zipper pools because it's, it's just a nightmare to open. You gotta love the, uh, the Peter McKinnon skull fly the flag pirate ship accent here. You can see there's just so much in this bag, but let's start with the camera and lens that I use every single day. It is my Swiss army knife. I love this camera. This is the, if I can pick it out here, this is the Canon R5 and it is pricey and it's an investment, but it has been worth every single penny. Like I said, it's my Swiss army knife. It can do everything and it does it exceptionally well. On the photo side, it takes 45 megapixel photos raw at 20 frames a second. So I do a lot of sports photography. This thing is absolutely bonkers for that. From the video side, <laughs> it shoots like 4K everything. 24, 30, 60, 120. It'll even take an 8K image and downsample it to a 4K, but it also shoots an 8K raw. So just absolutely nuts. This thing is, has been just amazing. I started vlogging not too long ago, vlogging, uh, but I've actually come to really enjoy it. And having this articulating flippy screen, even though it's not what I would prefer for just a straight photo camera from vi for video, it's indispensable. Awesome screen, touch screen, everything, ultra responsive, and it's just a beautiful display. Now, on top of that, this camera has just the most ludicrous autofocus. The autofocus is absolutely absurd, and the sheer amount of customization to that autofocus is also just ridiculous. You can get lost in it for sure. And then finally, I'm pretty sure this has best in-class image stabilization. So in-body image stabiliz stabilization, IBIS. This thing is ridiculous. I think it just gets four or five stops by the body itself, but when you pair it with certain RF glass, you get up to eight stops. Now the lens that I have on this is the 15 to 35 2.8. It is a big pricey lens. It's been worth every penny. It has stabilization. This focal range from 15 to 35 is so useful. People make a big deal out of the jello -y effect you get at 15 if IBIS is on. I don't really care personally. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But some people don't like it, you might not. But it's got great close-up focus distance too. 
Um, it's not a macro, but you can get really close, and I, and I love that. Now, the other lens that I'm rocking with this camera, because getting RF glass right now is just, it's like hunting unicorns. <laughs> but this is the RF 70 to 200 F4. And this is the one that's in stock. Uh, people are grabbing the 2.8. And I actually went with this over the 2.8 for two good reasons. One was the price. It's about $1,000 cheaper. And in all of the comparisons that I was seeing, that extra grand wasn't really justified. The other main reason is I do a lot of outdoor work. I'm camping, I'm hiking, I'm taking this gear with me all the time, traveling a ton. And so when you have a bag on your back for a long period of time, especially if you're hiking, size and weight definitely become a factor. And this is quite a bit smaller than the 2.8. Uh, like I said, the images are great. Every once in a while, I'll have a regret if I'm shooting jujitsu and I'm in an arena and the lighting is just terrible, right? Like that that's when the extra stop a light could make a difference. But other than that, this camera is insane. And if you pair it with the R5, the... The, the stabilization is just bonkers. It's so good. Uh, I used this combo to shoot like 4K 120 at Manhattan Beach, and it looked amazing. So, so stoked about this camera. You might have heard that that camera overheats. I personally have never had it overheat, but when I went to Manhattan Beach in the past, that tournament has been so hot that I've gotten blisters on my feet, like second degree burns. So I was like, oh man, if it does overheat and that's my only camera because I would have loved to just take one, I'm kind of SOL. So I ended up taking this. This is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Well, truthfully, I took that. So the camera filming me is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera 6K Pro. And it is an absolute beast of a camera. Some of my favorite features, is, well, the image quality for one. A lot of people will say like, you can't do better for the price. And I would probably agree. Is it better than the R5? It's just super different. And I'm going to do a video on that later on. Now, that camera is big. It is a big camera. And if you put on the battery grip, which I have for it, it is a monster. It's like this big. The ergos suck. But what it makes up for in workflow and ease of use totally outweighs the ergonomics and its quirks. It has two mini XLR inputs and that's what I'm using for audio, which is great. Just And it's got phantom power. So the audio preamps on that camera are amazing. Plus it's got uh, a three and a half mil mic input as well. So you could run both. You could run an XL, uh, an XLR, the mini XLR and a mic or maybe like a wireless lav, like on my wireless go to the Rode wireless go to. You can do both at the same time, which is freaking sweet. The ports on that thing are amazing. They also include a full-size HDMI, which is awesome because coming from an X-T3 where I broke that micro HDMI port twice, that was just super frustrating. So full-size HDMI. And then finally, it's got a USB-C slot, which you can power via a battery bank or run it directly to an SSD like a Samsung T5. I have one on there and it's two terabytes and I got it for 200 bucks. And that's way cheaper than the CFast cards that it takes. So you got three choices of media, SSD, uh, CFast, or an SD card. Now, the great thing about the 6K Pro is that it has an articulating screen and that makes a huge difference uh, because in the 6K and the 4K, those screens are fixed. So if you wanna get into some crazy angles, just having an articulating screen is great. And finally, probably what everybody loves more than anything are the internal NDs. Rather than screwing these on, these NDs on, because they're always so finicky and they just take forever. And you're like, oh, did I get it on right? I don't know. You just press some buttons and you get up to six stops. So I absolutely love that camera. It's my first cinema camera. And the more I use it, the more I love it. Just the image quality out of that thing is insane. And I think for the money, you can't touch it.
I know I did mention that it shoots 6K raw, but it also shoots that up to 50 frames a second, 4K, 60 frames a second. It's got a dedicated anamorphic mode, which is rad. Uh, it's got the best screen and menu in the business. If Blackmagic comes out with a box like a Red Komodo with an RF mount and image stabilization along with the other stuff, game over. As I mentioned earlier, this is the lens that I took with me to Manhattan Beach. This is that 24 to 70. It's a Sigma and for the money, you would be hard pressed to find a better 24 to 70. It is big. It's girthy. It's a chunk. It's heavy. But what you get for the price is amazing image stabilization and stellar image quality. So if you've been thinking, I think it was like 1200 bucks. The 24 to 70 from Canon, the RF, it's like 2600. Like I wanted to start shooting anamorphic and on the 6K, it has an EF mount and it's just really hard to find anamorphic lenses for the EF that aren't $20,000 a piece. You might have heard of these. These are the Sirui lenses, S-I-R-U-I. But these are affordable 1.33 stretch anamorphic lenses. These are micro four thirds mount. So, uh, and you can't, I hate this lens cap. God damn, I hate this lens cap. Unfortunately, you can't adapt these to the EF mount just because of the flange distance. But I bought two of these. I got the 35 and the 75. And I bought this. <laughs> I just showed you. This is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The main reason I bought it was so that I could shoot on these anamorphic lenses. Now this particular 4K, I really bought it because it had something done to it that makes it extra special. It's actually got the Tilta screen mod on there. Which is which is rad because, like I said, the screen was fixed on the 4K. This just makes it so much more versatile. So now the screen flips out. And on top of that, if you can see that, it's got an SSD, an M.2 SSD built into the camera now. So rather than having a cable that could corrupt your footage if it got bumped or pulled out, now the SSD actually sits inside the camera underneath the screen. And it's, I love, it, it still has a USB-C slot. So I still could power it if I wanted to. This camera is just like the 6K Pro. It doesn't have the NDs and it doesn't shoot 6K, but that's fine with me. It still shoots 4K DCI, ProRes, HQ. It still does 4K RAW if I ever wanted to use it, but it's, but it's awesome. Now powering this thing, you might've seen this like quick release plate on here. We need to power this because this sucker has notoriously bad battery life. Powering this is the Anton Bauer battery base. It just slips on there like that. And it'll give this camera like four to six hours uh, worth of runtime, which is just phenomenal. Other thing, let's go drone. I love this drone. This is the DJI Mavic Air 2S. This thing is so great. It flies so well, it's so smooth, shoots 5.4K up to 30 frames a second or 4K 60, which I use all the time. The image quality is unbelievable. One of the coolest things about this drone is that it will take a whole bunch of different clips, edit them, add music, all on its own. You literally hit a button and it does all of the work for you. It's just absolutely incredible. So that's the drone I have. I just keep it right here. Got the remote for it. I also just leave kind of like an ND16 on there between an eight and a 16 batteries in here. And then finally, this is my action cam. This is the 360. I have a couple of GoPros, but I seem to grab this more than anything else. And that's one, you don't have to like worry about framing. This thing is just so easy. Hit a button, do your thing, and then in post you can, do I want it nine by 16, 16 by nine? Do I want a section with slow-mo? Do I want a freeze frame? Do I want to zoom out and do a tiny planet? This thing does it all. And some of those like, photos it takes is also really good. Like I, I've thoroughly enjoyed 
taking photos with this thing. So this is my action camera. Audio, I'm taking two mics. Both of them are Deity. The one recording me is the Deity D3 Pro and that will go on this camera when I'm shooting. And then when I'm vlogging, I have this. This is the Deity D4 Duo and I got it because it's got capsules at both ends. So I can put it on the camera and talk and then when I flip the camera around, I don't have to flip the mic around. So I get great audio from both sides. Excellent little uh, mic. And the Deity D3 Pro is fantastic as well. It's got the auto on and off, so when the camera's on, the mic's on, when the camera's off, the, the mic goes off. Over here, this is my super cheap little media storage thing that I got from Amazon. So it holds three of my CF, uh, CF Express cards. I have two 512s and a 256. The 512s are from a brand called NKI, and they're like half the price of the SanDisks. I've had zero problems with them. They're a wonderful value. So 1,700 megabytes a second. I think it was $220 for a uh, 512 gig card. And then just SSD cards. Let's see. This one, I've got my Boundary Supply X-Pack pouch. And this is just a super durable pouch where I keep a bunch of techie things like charging cables, extra batteries for the R5, the charger uh, for the Air 2S. I've actually got my vlog tripod here which is just like a pair of legs and this Ulanzi ball mount. So there's that. Uh, again, charger, cables, battery. And then in this pouch, if you don't have one of these, you gotta get one. And it's just a small rig tool, right? With different size Allen wrenches, Phillips head screwdriver, flathead. Just like when you're rigging camera gear, this thing is just so money. I didn't have one for so long and you're trying to finagle like actual Allen wrenches. That's so much easier. Finally, the tripod that I travel with is the Peak Design travel tripod. And just because of its size, its weight, how thoughtful they were in designing this thing, it's a no-brainer. This is just a great tripod that I have used for a long time and just beat the ever-living hell out of. But the quick release is great. Um, it fits all the Peak Design like little capture clips. You can even put like a universal ball head on here if you want. Swap out the Peak Design one. I think that's it. I think that's everything. Uh, that Those are the tools that I use to create these videos day in and day out. And if you are excited to see that video from the Motherload from Aspen, Colorado, make sure you're subscribed here, but also make sure you're subscribed to my main channel because that's probably where I'll drop the actual vlog. If you liked this video, if you liked what you saw in my kit, if you've got your own suggestions, please leave them down in the comments below. But if you like this video, please hit that like button. As you may know, YouTube is ginormous. So finding this video, especially with a channel as small as mine, can be very difficult. Hitting that like button just makes this video much easier to see. It also lets me know what kind of content you want to see more of. Well, that's it. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.